Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, good evening. Welcome to this meeting of North Stowe's uh, Community Forum. Uh, my name's Councillor Henry Batchelor, and this is my first meeting chairing this forum. So I might give a very, uh, thank you, a very brief uh, introduction of myself for those that don't know me. Um, so I'm um, a member of South Cambridgeshire District Council. I sit in their cabinet. My role in the cabinet is the head of uh, new communities, which includes the lovely new community of North Stowe. Um, for those that may know my predecessor, Bill Handley, I've essentially moved into his role. So the role that Bill was doing, I've essentially taken that over. And also I would like to thank Bill very much for all his work. So we actually uh, exchanged positions back in, back in May. Um, so I just want to thank him for all the work he's done uh, up until that point. I know he was um, very committed to the role, uh, but now he's taken a well-deserved break. So I'd just like to extend my thanks to him there. Um, I need to run through a very brief bit of housekeeping and then we'll move into the agenda, which you can see on the screen there. I'm going to do my very best to keep to time. So I would ask all speakers to be as brief as possible, because I know we do have people here that will have questions for you. Um, I'm going to try and stick to the times on the screen. If we do have more questions than time allows for, I will move us on. But you'll see at the end there is another section for questions. So if you don't get to ask your question at the time, I know a lot of the speakers will be able to hold on at the end, answer any questions. And then there is a, um, uh, a less formal um, sort of session at the end as well for anything, anything additional. Um, so in terms of housekeeping, I should probably let everyone know if you are speaking, or asking a question, we are broadcasting this uh, meeting live online. So there's no uh, there's no video, but everything that is said into a microphone will be picked up and broadcast online. So just to make everyone aware of that. And we do also have a code of conduct for this forum. Um, I won't run through it all in detail, but just to give you sort of an overview of what we're expecting in terms of in terms of conduct here. So we do ask uh, that everyone is treated equally with respect and everyone acts in a way which does not discriminate against or exclude anyone else, and everyone acts in a fair and responsible way to everyone else. Um, and a very important one from my point of view, please do observe the authority of the chair or facilitator at all times, otherwise there will be dire consequences. So anyway, I think that's enough out of me. People aren't here to listen to me. So I'm going to move on to the first item, which is an update. If we can mute that, that'd be really helpful. <laughs> so um, we have an update. First of all, from Kirsten Donaldston from South Cam's District Council on North Stowe Community Buildings. So Kirsten is making her way over to the hot seat. Good evening. Um, yes, it is a quick update from me this evening on a couple of matters, namely around the Phase one community centre. Uh, those of you that have attended one of these before will know that we are uh, well on our way with the um, phase one community centre. We have been, since uh, we appointed Kia as our contractors for the scheme, we have been working through the detailed designs and engineering, and we are on programme to start on site in late October, November. Um, we do have some plans to show this evening. Uh, Mark from Kia is available for detailed questions, but I know there have been a lot of inquiries around um, what the site will look like. So we do have some plans here. So you can see on this plan that the construction site will be adjacent to that temporary community centre um, with Stirling Road and the green. The area where the blue hoarding is at the moment will be fixed up and will be used as a storage compound and contractor parking to keep con uh, to keep contractor parking off of the main roads um, so as not to disrupt residents um, and then the whole of the area where the building will be and the area up to Lynx Lane will all be fenced off and this is partly to meet fire regulations but also to allow for um, storage of materials and for the construction to take place. It will, you can see here, in the blue shaded area, it will overhang slightly the area that's currently built with the block paving. So the building comes right up to the edge of where the grass currently sits and there will be a canopy on the completed building. So the fencing for the um, for the construction site will come out to where those trees currently are. 
Um, we are having a um, tree survey undertaken at the moment um, to check the health of those trees. I think there's one outside the temporary community centre that isn't very well, and we are looking to potentially replace that. And the two other trees we're hoping to gift to somewhere else on North Stowe, so that actually we will have more trees than we had initially planned. This here just shows a little bit more detail. Um, the plan has um, been arrived at in order to try and um, keep to an absolute minimum any disruption for the temporary community centre. And we envision that you will be able to use the temporary community centre without any effects for um, the duration of the build. Um, there is one small caveat, which is we will need to move the fence um, a couple of feet. It does mean that the cycle parking for um, the temporary community centre will be moving to um, the front of the building and the sheds in the back garden will be moving by about two metres, but there will be no loss of any provision and it should be able to stay open for the duration of the build. Um, I'm going to pause slightly and just look for Mark and see that he doesn't have anything that we're desperate to add there. No. In which case I will move on because um, we are now at the point of starting the construction for the building. There are a number of things that that we need to put in place. So that's things like services for the Internet and for the water and electricity and all the rest of it. And um, it does mean that the building needs an address. So the bit that's really exciting is we are now at the stage that we would like to name the building. Um, phase one community centre just won't cut it for the long term. I think it, it makes sense here in the early days, but in 30 years time when North Stowe is really booming, um, it will just maybe seem a little bit odd. So um, I am pleased to say that we are going to be opening um, a sort of short period for you all to be able to make suggestions for what would be an appropriate name for this phase one community centre. We are, I think, looking for something that has a bit of texture to it. You know, it, it doesn't just say, you know, North Stowe Community Centre. That is a bit boring and you're going to have lots of them um, when the when the place is complete. So, yes, looking for something along that lines. A couple of caveats on that as well. We won't accept anything that says town or central or anything like that, because that will be more appropriate for the next phase in the town centre. So it, it needs to be sort of broadly location appropriate as well. Um, and uh, the mayor, uh, Paul, has given a really good sort of way of framing it, which is this centre is going to be a centre for, for everybody and all sorts of different activities and so on and so forth. And Paul has said, when you think about what the name might be, a good way to frame it might be to say, if I was inviting someone to a wedding reception at this centre, what would I want to be writing on my invitation? Do I want it to say, save the date, North Stowe Phase 1 Community Centre? Or do I want it to be something a little bit more special than that? So we thought that that was a really nice way to do it. Um, I am. What I will do, actually, I will let you know how how the decision is going to be made, and then I will pass over to Michelle to let you know how you can make your suggestions. So in terms of um, once people have made their suggestions and the town council will be giving their um, official suggestions as well as a town council um, as to what the name might be, all of the suggestions will go to the North Stowe Delivery Group the North Stowe Delivery Group is a group made up of um, elected members from across uh, the patch. So that is the county councillor, the two district councillors. Uh, I think we have two town councillors on there as well and Henry as chair. Um, and they will make the decision on the name based on the suggestions from the community and from the town council as well. So I will now pass over to... Michelle, on uh, how to make your suggestion. Here's one I made earlier. So there are two ways 
um, that you can give your suggestions. We have got some cards that you can actually fill in and post in our lovely post box, which we'll be keeping at the cabin. Or you can use the QR code that we will have. So there are QR codes on the card, but you will find around North Stow in the cabin and the notice board, the notice board on the green. And here at the pavilion, we will have posters up with the QR code. So you can scan those and that will take you to um, our page on the South Cambridgeshire District website and you can put your suggestions in and your reason for the name that you want to give. We will also put this onto some Facebook pages as well so that you can scan the QR code. So we do have a few postcards this evening, but if you want to have a good think about it when you go home and scribble some ideas and then go on the QR code and scan it and put your suggestions in that way. But otherwise we'll have the, uh, the post box at the cabin. Thank you. Um, we do have um, one further update, which is around the what I'm going to call the the building formerly known as the the Civic Hub. Um, it has come to our attention that this hub, which will provide health, library, and more community facilities in the town centre, being called the Civic Hub, has um, we think caused some confusion. We've had some questions about whether police and fire services and stuff are, are going to be in that hub as well. Um, and we are really clear, and I'm sure most of you are really clear, that th this is a building for the community. It isn't. It isn't a guild hall. It's not a council building. It will deliver health services. Um, it will be a large community centre and it will have the town library as well. But it's it's not got other public services in it in the traditional way. So um, we are henceforth um, using a new working uh, title for this building because it will be named further down the line as well. Um, and we are going to refer to that one now as the town hub. So it's just so that if that comes up um, and discussions or other meetings, it doesn't confuse you. It's not a separate building from what was the Civic Hub, but we are now just calling it the Town Hub because it is about the town. Um, on that one, I know that you are all really interested to, um, to know more. South Cams have instructed some detailed feasibility work on that, um, which is the sort of precursor to bringing in a full uh, design and build team and moving into the planning application phase. So we're just at the start of that process now, and we hope that we will have much more detail on that when that is completed in the new year. OK, uh, so one quick question from me. When is the closing date for suggestions? In, into the mic. Sorry, that was me. I apologise. October the 11th is the closing date. OK, so don't hang around, I think is the answer. Yep. Um, OK, thank you very much for that update. We do have about a minute or so left. So if anyone does have uh, a question, we'll probably have time for one, possibly two. Uh, I see Farouz in the front row there. Hi, I was just going to ask about um, the green behind um, the temporary cabin and is that going to be usable for our residents? Behind the cabin, yes. Behind where the community centre, the permanent community centre will be, no. But there will still be a large grassed area behind the temporary community centre. Okay, thank you. All right, well, we'll, we'll, um, we'll say thank you very much uh, for that presentation there. And yeah, please do start thinking about some names that you'd like your new centre to be called. Um, with that, then we'll move on to our next speaker. Um, we have Mr. Jerry McQuaid, who's going to be talking to us about green belt and land maintenance charges. Jerry, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, some of you may recognise me from my informative billing sessions that I hold every December. Coming down here, but thanks for having me down again. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to put a presentation together from feedback that I've had from residents. So what I do is I come down every December and have a pre a post billing catch up with individuals. So if they want to ask any questions in regards to stuff on our things on our bill, then obviously, you know, I'm there to be able to answer that. Another thing I try to do is take away any questions that you have 
in regards to something that's not my area of if it's customer care, et cetera, and have that responded to. So what I've done is I've tried to split this into several sections. I've been told to be quite quick because there might be some questions. Uh, so what I wanted to do firstly was highlight the newly adopted areas within the current billing year. Every year, you know, we'll send out a bill to the residents and we'll have a plan and a written statement of services. However, due to the sort of North Stowe, it's a constantly evolving sort of entity. Some areas have come off in recent years, some more areas have been added on this year. So one of the pieces of feedback was it's not always clear what's come off and what's come on. So I'll sort of talk you through that and what we're discussing doing in, a, in advance. Obviously, one of the hot topics last year was the, the non-routine works and the costs involved in doing so. So what I wanted to do was come out, speak to you all in advance. This is to date, there may be some more. I do have to give you that precursor that, you know, there may be other non-routine works coming on. The proposed annual management charge for the coming year. Any sort of up-to-date customer care stats and then just a few other bits of business. So obviously this is the, the, the current plan of the areas. The areas highlighted in pink are the areas that have come on in the current billing year. And obviously you'll see Kingfisher Pond. We're anticipating that coming on in the coming months. So I would anticipate by the time you get this plan and your new billing pack, the, the Kingfisher Pond will be highlighted as well. There may also be some areas in the Hatton Ponds area that are coming on. I don't have sight of that yet, but I'm anticipating, you know, that they may come on, you know, before we send out your, your billing data. So the cost of the non-routine works to date. Now, just to be clear, these are these are actual costings. Uh, it may so the play area repairs are actually that's three 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 pieces of work. So the play area repairs have came to a thousand one hundred sorry one thousand one hundred fifty five pounds. The planting works are six thousand nine hundred fifty pounds. Now, what I am happy to do is put in a planting plan so you can see all the areas of work that's been carried out. So it gives you a, a more informative view of what is being planted. There was tree works carried out to the tune of £6,290. That came off the back of a tree survey, so they were required works. There was a new fence installed. There was lighting repairs of a thousand. Graffiti removal, a bin repair, grass repairs and hedge planting. So the appropriate cost per household today is £15 and £21 plus VAT. So... So the proposed AMC for the current year is £107 plus VAT. That is an increase of £6 on last year's bill. To put it into real terms, because one of the questions that people ask me all the time are, are we, you know, doing well against what was originally set out within the title deeds? So the title deeds originally said it would be £93 plus VAT, and that was indexable from 2018. So... Whilst we don't have all the areas on and we've got some areas to come on, in real terms, that's £126 plus VAT. Now, in that £107, we have a small provision to, to carry out works that weren't in the original costings. So it's about approximately £15. So technically, just now, we would be billing about nine. Uh, about £92. So we're well within the parameters. In fact, we're quite a bit under it. So I feel that we're performing well in that regard. The precursor is that this is based on 1,379 units, which is the unit count that we've been advised that is has been sold. We don't have all those units to date from the developers, so our delivery team are working hard to get all that information across before the new billing year. The, this also includes the, the new areas, including Kingfisher Pond and a new play that I believe has been adopted. So should Kingfisher Pond come on, there won't be any amendments to the bills. However, if Hatton Ponds was to come on, then this may change slightly, you know, but what we'll do is we'll notify in writing. Oops, I have went past one there. Apologies. Oh, I knew I'd break this. So, 
In regards to customer care contacts, one of the, the, the pieces of information that somebody asked us to provide last time was what are people unhappy about, what are people inquiring in uh, regards. So I, I got this information directly from our customer care manager, Chris McClellan. So in the last six months, we've had 27 contacts over a, a number of, of different inquiries. So all their contacts were responded to within our 20 working day customer care charter. However, I imagine some people are going to say the works weren't carried out within 20 working days. So, you know, the customer care charter is there for the inquiry to be, to, inquiry to be responded to. Obviously, I appreciate certain works take much longer to rectify. So the complaint types, I've just tried to break it into a, a degree of root cause analysis. Here. So the up until a few days ago, unadopted areas was the, the, the most inquired about topic. We, we have a number of people who contact us from the parcels within saying, when will this come across? And obviously, one of the things that our guys in our sales team and legal team are doing, they're working hard to get these across as quickly as possible. Maintenance now, maintenance can be anything. We, we have inquiries about tree management, broken limbs, et cetera. So, you know, dog fouling is the current most common one from we actually had very little dog filing inquiries until the new area of land was adopted and i'm aware there's been an issue in regards to dog filing not being picked up uh, billing we've had three inquiries and then a couple of inquiries in regarding to the legal sort of situations of the title deeds so just a bit of other business before i we come to the questions so Obviously, one of the things we've tried to do is we've tried to work hard with uh, the community council, with the, the community in general. And obviously, we are proud to continue to support the North Store Running Festival. Also, you know, we're, we're, we're keen to, again, keep the certain other things going with the Christmas tree. We've recently just done a tie-in with the, the newspaper, North Stone News, I believe, Nick, yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the development has recently been nominated for... Uh, an award from Pro Landscaping Magazine. So, you know, it, it shows that, you know, the, the development is shaping up nicely. I appreciate there's been a, a few issues uh, in recent months, but, you know, we are working hard to, to get the service delivery correct. One of the things that I've taken back from meetings, I'll be back down in the first week of November. And I'm conscious that all the information I've given you here today is about the strategic open space, whereas Many of you will get bills pertaining to the parcels that you live in, whether it be blue, et cetera. So when I'm down in the 1st of November, I'll also have that information. The other information I'll have in the 1st of November is the actual billing. So, you know, I'll be able to sit down and say, this is what the cost is, and this is why it is, and hopefully that will allay any fears in regards to when the bills come out, you're just not aware of what the costs are going to be. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, obviously, any questions? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you, Jerry. I think that was uh, very clear and you actually were quicker than I expected. So, hats off to you. Um, if people do have questions for Jerry, we've got about five to 10 minutes for questions if, if the, we need that. Um, so, if you could just raise your hands if you do have questions. So, we'll start with the gentleman with the uh, leaflet in his hands, and then we'll come to you, sir, here. Thank you. Um, so, the sleeves that are used to protect saplings when trees are planted, for example, around the lake and, and other places. Um, they're obviously, well, many of them are non-biodegradable. I think the first lot that we used were non-biodegradable mm -hmm. and then it changed. Um, so what we see is a lot of more mature trees now, mm -hmm. several meters in height, still with that plastic wrapped around the trunk. Okay. And surely that's no longer necessary. And can they be removed? Would you mind if I call up our regional operations manager or customer liaison manager, they'll be able to advise you okay. of that right now. Thank you, sir. And, and the other point, just a follow-up point, is 20 days seems like an incredibly long time for someone to be, to be waiting well, for a response. Well, 20 days is, is the customer care charter. We generally tend to, you know, respond quicker. I mean, I, I can tell you, I run the statistics on, in regard to our phones. Now, the customer care answer rate is about 96%. And that's based on three minutes on the phone. So every call is answered within 90 or well, 96% of the calls are answered within three minutes. Obviously, if you then left a voicemail, that should be responded to generally within about 72 hours. Whereas we do have the, the, the reason why we have 20 working days 
is due to legislation in Scotland. We are covered by the first tier tribunal service. So we have to put an absolute maximum in min maximum down. And we felt that that was ultimately, you know, the maximum we'd allow anything to go. So hopefully that clears up. Uh, yeah, very quickly on the um, rabbit guards, um, the, the contracts like to do that sort of as a winter job. Um, yeah, there's a plan to remove sort of sections and areas and target each winter. Um, the uh, pond areas, though, are not ours yet, so they've not been touched by us yet. OK, thank you for that. And then we've got a question from the gentleman here with the glasses. I don't know if the mic can be passed to the gentleman in the middle here. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm not sure whether you are aware of the dog bin situation. Yes. Like uh, last month, there are plenty of them. Um, and also not exactly the dog bins, but also the regular bins, which is, um, I talked to LNQ and they said the area has been adopted by uh, Green Belt from the 1st of June this year. And this is August. So they haven't been cleared for like over two months. Uh, well, and uh, this is yesterday, uh, right across the field. So it has been over three months that has been uh, hasn't been uh, cleared. What well, uh, strangely, it just has been cleared today, <laughs> which is uh, prompt enough. But uh, I, well, the, you're building, so I, I think this is perfect because uh, um, on the on the uh, service agreement, it clearly says. Uh, they will be cleared routinely, so that's just one thing. And the second thing is, there is a, a regional manager yes. that will inspect the bins, like uh, which is you, yeah. all right, every month. So it has been overflowed for over, over at least two months. Why, why, why are you like, like not? <laughs> well, to to answer your question, you know, obviously I I, I completely appreciate and you know I'll accept that a number of the bins that in the newly adopted areas have haven't been emptied. Now we, I believe it's only five bins or six bins. I believe all the other bins have been emptied on schedule. Now to go back to your your, your question, we have a, a a schedule where they're emptied weekly on the new bins because unfortunately the contractor we would generally use had advised that there was no capacity for them to provide the service. Now we, when we had adopted the area, we'd anticipated that they would continue on the service and, and bill us. You know, accordingly, obviously that didn't happen. There has been a, a drop in service. I completely accept that, you know, and what we've done is we've went back, because we can't use the current contractor, we've went to a new contractor and the, the bins are now emptied. Now, I spoke to a couple of individuals who have my details from drop-in sessions and they had advised that there was an issue. You know, I'm I'm the billing manager. I'm not the customer care manager. Well, I think that's perfect but because... Um, if you just let me finish right, one okay. second, okay? <laughs> now, it, it came to my attention due to that. Now, I spoke to Tom. Tom was already in the process of liaising with the original contractor and a new contractor. Now, I accept that they were empty, weren't emptied for about four or five weeks. I, I, I concede that fact, you know, but when you bring on a new piece of land, as is anything, there's potentially teething issues. Now, this has been a teething issue. Now, I spoke to several members of the community after the fact to confirm that the bins were emptied, and they confirmed that the bins in question were emptied. Now, I appreciate I've actually done a site walk around today myself, and there was one bin not emptied at Kingfisher, Kingfisher Pond. It's a small square bin, you know, and obviously Al speak with Tom and have that done. You know, all I can do is apologise. You know, we try to get it right first time. We don't always get it right first time. You know, I think anybody who has spoken to me at drop-in sessions or spoken to me, you know, if I say I'll go away and do something, I will generally always go away and do it. Maybe not quite as quickly as people want it. Now, in regards to, you know, the, 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 bin, the bin's not been emptied, all I can do is apologise. You just won't be charged for that, and I will go back. As one of the questions that was sent to me from the community council was, how do we intend to recompense individuals for that so i'll go away and i will speak to them and any sort of you know goodwill gesture will show on the bill quite clearly i mean i'm happy to give you my details you know and drop you know 
I'll drop you an email, or you can drop me an email, direct, and I'll answer you directly. You know. So you're saying the lack of service has been accounted for in the bill already? No. What I'm saying is you won't be billed for anything because the service is dropped. In regards to the the corrective service, you won't be billed for that. So the empties that we had to do after the fact, you won't be billed for that. We'll absorb that as you know a company. Obviously, in regards to any drop in service for the number of weeks, then that would be something I'll speak about with the head of operation, or the head of operations and the director of operations. That will then be reflected within the bill. Now, what that will be, I don't know, and I'm not going to stand up here and mislead you. But you know, if you want to speak about it or you've got any other inquiries, I'm happy to provide them my details. So you can contact me directly. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Oh, absolutely, sir. Next. Okay, thank Anyone you very much. Else? So we have an undertaking there. Uh, we've probably got time for one more. So this gentleman here with the long hair. Thank you. Uh, just a quick one. So yeah, I think last year my bill was like 130 or something. And my... oh, that is that including VAT? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yep. And then, but the basically, I I forgot to pay it. Right. Um, and the late payment fee was 24 pound. Yes. Which I thought was very very excessive. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see how twenty four pound to send a reminder okay. is anywhere representative of the cost of that late payment. Well, uh, I mean, all all I can do is take that information back. You know, the the decision isn't mine's in regards to the to the charges. The, the the charges, you know, are in place. You know, to to protect the revenue for both. Because what we can't do is charge residents back for the for the administration, etc. That that we incur you know, in regards to, to non-payment. So ultimately, I can take the feedback back to the, the relevant individuals and say that you feel this is, is excessive, you know. However, these sort of costs, uh, penalty charges have been viewed by the FTTS and they're viewed as acceptable charges in regards to, you know, enforcement. So one of the things that, you know, we do at Greenbelt is we don't send out late payment card letters first. I, I'm not sure. I um, imagine all you as individuals in here pay your bills, but if you don't pay your bill, we will generally always try to make a call out to one of your customers first. If we have you, if we have your details on the phone, we'll generally try to call out. It's not always possible, but ultimately one of the things we'll always try and do is give people a gentle nudge, a reminder. You know, obviously, if we feel that a, a late payment charge somebody says, well, I've not paid my bill due to X, Y, and Z, and they've always paid their bills, we will generally always remove that late payment charge. It's a goodwill gesture on the first instance, you know. And, you know, if this is the only time you've not paid it, so if you give me your details, then, you know, I'll have that late payment charge refunded to you, you know, as a goodwill gesture. But we, you know, I will take your feedback back to... Yeah, like I said, I just... I thought I'd set up the direct debit. I hadn't. Yeah. I, I got one reminder, I think, via email, and I, I just missed it. But yeah. Like, I mean, well, this is another thing we do is we yeah. do email reminders out at no charge. You know, it is only when you get a paper bill or a paper reminder. So the way our billing system is set up is that you have 28 working days to pay your bill. If the bill is not paid in 20 working days, an email reminder will come out to you to notify you that the yeah. payment's not been made. Only at 29 working days or 30 working days will the, the late payment notice be generated and issued out. We generally try to phone customers between sort of day 20 and day 30 to, to give them an opportunity to pay it. But I appreciate it. we can't always get around every non-paying customer, you know, uh, dependent, but we do try our utmost. Okay. okay. Thank you. But I think we have an undertaking there anyway for them to take yes. that way and, and discuss it internally. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to move on at that point. Thank so, you. Gary and colleagues, thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for your time. I understand you're back off to Scotland now. <laughs> well, well, good luck. Um, okay. Up next, we have uh, star of the North Stowe film, Dean Harris, <laughs> uh, from Homes England, uh, who's going to talk to us. Um, yeah about Generally Homes England. So the floor is yours, Dean. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. Just gonna make sure I can operate the machine here. Just bear with me. Yes, good. 
Uh, I'm Dean Harris from Homes England with a quick update on North Stow uh, phase two. We've got lots of um, planning applications in at the moment and we've been busy supporting the community. Um, but because of time, I'm going to focus on uh, ongoing and planned works and introduce our new uh, development partners who will be um, speaking after myself. So um, just a reminder, Homes England is the government's housing and regeneration agency. We are, in relation to North Doe, the master developer for North Doe phases two and three. These are the areas broadly shown in yellow and orange on the plan. Um, the extent of, uh, sort of interest, of direct interest, if you like, doesn't um, include um, phase one. Sorry, Dean, just a sec. Could the gentleman at the back, would you mind stepping outside? It's quite off-putting. Thank you. Um, thanks, Chair. Doesn't include um, phase one, including the area that we're currently uh, in. So ju just to kind of, um, uh, yeah, uh, share that um, with you. Uh, as you may have noticed, we've got um, a lot of works ongoing at the moment, um, particularly to the area around and south of um, the education campus. Greenfisher are forming the Eastern Sports Hub uh, pitches down uh, near the secondary college. Uh, this is the area outlined in red on the plan on the right hand side there. So this includes football pitches, a cricket pitch, an outdoor gym and a BMX track. The work is due to complete in spring 2025, but, and this is really important, the pitches will require 18 to, um, 18 to 24 months to establish, so cannot be used during that period. So I just, want, yeah, just need to be clear that completion of the works doesn't necessarily equate to the pitches being able to be used. That's standard good practice, I believe, in terms of um, delivering pitches. Cognition are digging the next uh, drainage lake, uh, currently called Pond 5. I think we need another naming competition. Uh, <laughs> Pond 5 is shown in red at the bottom of the uh, plan. The material that's been excavated is being used to raise the land levels within uh, Phase 2C, which is shown in orange on the top of the plan there. So that is part of the preparation of that um, parcel. An internal hall road and the future bus only route are being used to transfer material um, between those two sites to minimise use of public roads. Again, this work is due to complete in spring 2025. Uh, finally, um, site preparation works are also due to start in the west of phase two. So this is the area around uh, the old barracks. Uh, so kind of around North Slow House, if you know uh, that location, the Homes England uh, office. That's due to start um, at the end of this month. I mentioned this at the last forum and just want to reassure people that the existing buildings and the important trees are to be retained as part of that um, preparation work. So I've got a few further updates here, uh, some quite detailed. Uh, the Rampton Greenway has now been reopened following some remedial work that was undertaken uh, down there. It was um, partly closed for a while, a bit longer than we hoped for, but it is now uh, reopened. And the no man's land area at the end of Rampton Road has been resurfaced. Uh, pardon? Good question. Um, Fru's asked if all of the uh, no man's land area has been resurfaced. The last time I looked, most of it had. Um, I will come back to you and let you know if that's the extent of the um, resurfacing or if, if um, uh, or not. Uh, we've recently undertaken works to repair the bird hides on Halsey and Mere, uh, and we've installed CCTV on the Southern Access Road. So um, there has been a number of antisocial behaviour uh, uh, incidents along the road and residents are aware of those and have reported some of those. And so in response, um, we have installed CCTV uh, in that area. And on the final point, we're continuing to investigate early opening of the cycleway alongside the future bus link to the guided busway. So this is the area that's currently, currently fenced off along the access road between the access road and 
the guided busway. Uh, it's subject to a road safety audit. Um, this is ongoing and requires agreement of the County Council, pointing to Tam here from the County Council in case, in case you wondered. Um, and um, we'll open, we're looking to open that as soon as we can when it's obviously safe to do so and are working with the County Council to achieve that. I hope to be in a, a position to advise on the potential timescale uh, for the opening of that um, cycleway at the next meeting. Hmm. So I've been asked to sort of um, say a few words of clarification in relation to the two southern lakes shown on the plan there, Unity Lake and Halcyon Mere. So these lakes are primarily designed for surface water management, which is uh, important to minimise the town's environmental impact and keep homes safe. Their design maximises the potential of the features to support uh, ecology and amenity. Um, they have been designed such that they can or could potentially be used for boating and swimming once fully established. They're currently being managed by Homes England's estate team in the interim, and there isn't an intention in the short term to uh, open them for um, public access in terms of use of the water. We're monitoring water quality. If we're approached by an operator who would um, be willing to operate those facilities on our behalf, of course, we'd consider uh, that um, as a possibility. But I think the main thing to say is that in the medium to long term, the lakes are likely to be um, passed to Anglian Water, who are um, who have extensive experience of operating and management and managing bodies of water such as this. And so I think that's probably the, the best prospect of the water um, being used in terms of swimming, fishing, kayaking, paddleboarding. Not entirely sure what that is, but um, some of you may know. Um, I'm really pleased to uh, and excited to be introducing two new faces to the meeting uh, this evening. Richard from Capital and Centric, who will speak in a moment and Francis from town who will follow. Capital and Centric, along with Keepmo, were announced as new strategic partners following the signing of a strate strategic collaboration agreement for North Doe in uh, July. The agreement requires the parties to work together with Homes England to develop proposals for phase two in accordance with existing planning permissions and deliver around 3,000 homes and the town centre at an accelerated rate. In terms of town, we've signed an initial agreement to, for them to deliver a scheme of around 130 homes to the south of the future town centre, including a really exciting uh, co-housing element, similar to what they've delivered at uh, Marmalade Lane in Cambridge. I won't say too much more because I know uh, Francis has a detailed um, presentation plan for you, um, but yeah, very exciting um, prospect for the uh, town. So in the first instance, I'm going to hand over to Richard from Capital and Centric to tell you a bit more about uh, his company and their interest in North Stone. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Richard. I'm from Capital and Centric. Um, obviously, there's times precious this evening, so we don't want to take too much of your time boring with all the kind of various bits and pieces that, that we've been doing in the past. So um, I just want to stand up, kind of give you a very, very brief overview of who we are, what we do. So we are a social impact developer based up in the Northwest. Um, really what that means is everything that we touch has to have a positive social impact. So we've kind of got our teeth delivering things like listed assets, saving listed assets, taking buildings that were otherwise listed for demolition, reusing them, repurposing them. Uh, we work in a lot of areas of, of lower value. We've also delivered new town centres elsewhere in the UK. I uh, have a very, very good relationship with Homes England all across the UK on a number of different projects. And so uh, we're really, really pleased that they've asked us to come along and have a chat with you guys and have a look at what we can do in North Stow. So as Dean mentioned, we're a third of a collaboration agreement. So we are down to deliver you the town centre and an element of housing to go alongside that. Now, the reason I say I don't want to kind of throw all this at you at the moment as to what we're thinking is that in all honesty, five minutes won't do it justice. There's a lot to look at. We've had a look at the video and obviously Dean's movie was fantastic um, and uh, really, really interested to see what you guys have been up to and all the kind of community groups you've already established and the great things you're already doing. So we don't want to come in, chat on everyone's toes and 
tell you all the great stuff we're going to do without having spoken to you first. So really, I want to take the opportunity to say that uh, on the 10th of October, we are going to be hiring out Tap and Social. So everyone is more than welcome to come down, come down, have a drink with us, grab some food. Uh, and we want to have a very sort of informal kind of opportunity to chat to you, be a face to actually have a discussion with rather than, you know, put five minutes of passing a microphone around to ask very specific questions with specific answers. We want to be able to have a proper conversation, listen to some of the concerns, tell you a bit about what we're thinking, tell you more about who we are as well, how we think we can really uh, benefit and, and work well with you guys on North Stow. So, uh, so I don't want to take up too much of your, of your time this evening. I'll leave it there. Um, I don't know whether there are any questions, but I'm hanging around at the end of the night as well if anybody wants another a bit more opportunity. Well, thank you very much, both of you there. Um, we do have a couple of minutes. Uh, if anyone does have any specific questions, either for uh, Dean at Homes England or appreciate he's only just been introduced to us, but uh, Richard at Capital and Centric. So if anyone does, please do raise your hand. If not, sorry, yeah, gentlemen here again. Yeah, quick question for Dean. You mentioned about maybe the potential for Anglia Water to take over the lakes. Was there any timelines on that? Um, I don't have a specific timeline um, for that. Other than that is the uh, current intention. Um, the, um, the point at which we expect the lakes to have to be adopted is some way off, but we are having discussions with them about earlier adoption. Uh, and if there is any kind of movement or positive news on that, I'll obviously report it to the forum as soon as I can. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, one very quick question over at the side then as well. And then we'll take that one and then we'll move on to the next item, which is again about development. So it might actually tie in. Uh, I think it's for Homes England to start with. You said 2B and 2C was spring 25. Does that include any retail? And if not Cap Hill and Centric with the town centre, when will we see any retail? But sorry, I didn't miss to start the question. I, I said two two B and two C, I think you said spring twenty-five. They were coming. Does that include any retail shops or just houses? Um two phase. I might be speaking across purposes here, but phase 2B is currently being delivered. So this is an orange um, kind of square in the middle of the plan. Sterling Fields has been delivered by Keep Moat, and that will include um, a commercial unit that the council will be responsible for. Whether it's a shop, a cafe, a gym, be uh, down to Kirsten, I suspect. Yeah, I think it's a question about retail units, but perhaps Kirsten from South Camps might be able to give a, a brief response to that. Yes, so I can confirm that um, South Cambridgeshire District Council, as part of our affordable homes acquisition on phase 2B, have acquired a ground floor commercial unit. We are expecting that that will be complete around August 2025. Um, I can't tell you what it will be other than it's 192 square metres of commercial space. Um, we do have commercial agents who help with our um, investment and commercial profile, and they will be putting um, that unit to the market um, to see who is interested in taking it up. So we we can't make any promises as to who will take up the lease, but it will be an open process when the building is closer to being ready. Great. Thanks, Kirsten. Thank you. Um, OK, well, I think we'll move on from there. But yeah, Dean and Richard, thank you very much for the updates there. Um, I understand you'll be hanging around at the end as well is that right so if anyone does have any questions about homes england and the work they're uh, the um facilities they're providing please do call a dean at the end um so up next on the theme of development we have francis wright francis wright and some people so welcome uh, and you're from town is that right yes okay so that's me right so let me introduce you to Town, a small developer who um, have previously worked, their first built project was in North Cambridge in Orchard Park. And this is an artist's impression of that uh, development. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it as we go through. So Town is a small developer and most of what we do is residential led, but it can be at different scales. 
So we're also working in northeast Cambridge on Hartree, which is 5,600 homes being master planned. And our mission is to build good places for better lives. This is actually where I live. This is Marmalade Lane co-housing community in Orchard Park in North Cambridge. And you can just about see my apartment there. And Tejasvini is one of my neighbours and we'll give you some context to that in a moment. So um, we're working on a site in phase two. I'll show you the particular site as we go through. And the, we'll be working with a local architect, small architects, who also worked with town on Marmalade Lane. And, and this is our site down here, 2D1, and just on the edge of what will be the town centre. And uh, it's 2.8 hectares, shovel ready, space for 130 homes. It's likely to be in four blocks. Uh, we're committed to delivering one of those blocks as a co-housing scheme for multi-generational scheme um, and ideally more. And at the moment, we're looking at two co-housing schemes and we'll come on to the details of that. Uh, a mix of market sale and the statutory affordable homes that you would expect in North Stowe. This is a purely an illustrative um, plan for the site. You can see the four blocks there. This will be worked on and uh, through a co-design process with future residents and with local community involvement. You may have been wondering what co-housing is. What on earth am I talking about? It wouldn't be a surprise if most of you in the room have not heard about it. There are only 11 new build co-housing communities in the UK. There's far more common in Northern Europe and North America, but in the UK still really rare. The nearest one is Marmalade Lane in Cambridge. Uh, the demand there is such that we're quite confident there will be demand also in North Stowe. The slide really summarizes the, summarizes the key principles that co-housing groups and communities in the UK sign up to. All I'm going to do here is tell you what it is in a nutshell. So it's a mutually supportive form of living in which people occupy both their own homes and have access to additional shared spaces and facilities, which they, they jointly manage and enjoy with their neighbours. And so some of the key aspects of co-housing design, we've I've highlighted three here. One is these shared facilities, a mix of both indoor and outside facilities. Typically the indoor one, it comes in the form of what's called a common house. What will be in it will really be um, sort of spec as we work with future residents on that. But it could be shared meeting space, shared kitchen, guest rooms, uh, tool share, homeworking. If you want an example, see what, uh, what kind of things you can find in an existing community. At the back, there's a leaflet about Marmalade Lane um, and you can have a look at that. Uh, the other two features are about open spaces, designing to create, sort of uh, maximize the shared communal garden space and designing the streets. And there will be three little streets between the blocks to um, make them a safe place for lingering, socialising and um, for children to play safely. In terms of the development timeline, we're working with the ambition that people will be able to move in in summer 27 and therefore submitting a planning application in spring 25. And therefore we're starting work now, recruiting future residents to join this journey with us um, and we'll be entering into a co-design process in October through to spring 25. 17 people will be joining us to visit the site on Sunday as part of getting that underway. Um, so I mentioned two co-housing communities. This is the one that town is recruiting for and um, Norstow co-housing. We're underway. I don't really want to say anything more about that, but if you're interested or no one is interested, you can contact us through the Town Co-Housing website. But what's really exciting on this side is once this got going, an, pre, an existing group, co-housing group in uh, Cambridge approached Town to see if they could come and join in as part of this site. 
And I'm going to introduce you to Savannah Co-Housing for them to tell you a little bit about their, the community they're hoping to create. Thank you. Um, so co-housing is brilliant. I live at Marmalade Lane. It's fantastic. Um, but Subana co-housing uh, grew out of our Buddhist community. So there's been a Buddhist center in Cambridge for over 30 years, a number of people associated with that. Um, and we decided how fantastic to have co-housing plus living in a community who many of people uh, in which are our friends. Um, and so we were really excited when this possibility in North Stowe came up, really looking forward to living in North Stowe, contributing to the community here. Uh, my name's Teja Sweeney. This is my colleague, Dharma Chanda. Maybe you'd like to say a few words? I don't think I've got anything to add, really. I mean, co-housing is really hard to explain unless you're there. So I guess Marmalade Lane is a lived example of co-housing. Um, it's, it's a wonderful uh, sort of atmosphere and community at, at Marmalade Lane. So we're really looking forward to doing that here in North Stowe. Yeah. But there may be questions about co-housing because it is a bit unusual and confusing, but really exciting as well. I think that's all I've got to add, really. OK, well, thank you very much to all three of you for uh, for presenting to us. Um, you may have mentioned this. If people do want to sign up to your webinar or come to your weekend event, is information on your flyer? Up at the end. Okay. And it's on our website. Okay, fine. So you'll be hanging around at the end, will you, as well, to take questions? Okay. So if anyone does want any more information on that, um, please do speak to one of our three friends at the end. Thank you very much. Okay. And we're back on schedule. All right. Um, so up next, we have uh, Claire Gibbons from South Cams, um, who will be talking to us about the phase one faith lands. Welcome, Claire much good evening everybody i did actually give a presentation at the last community forum so i'm going to recap recap what i said then uh, and give you the current position in which we find ourselves now so um we've been successful in securing uh, land for faith and community groups to develop across north stow Specifically in phase one, we've got 0.25 hectares of land, and that's sandwiched between parcel H13, Bug Hunter Waters, and the Urban Splash Peninsula development. We've got further space reserved in phase two. There'll be some faith land in phase 3A, which will be serviced land adjacent to the local centre or within the secondary mixed use zone. There'll also be a community garden for remembrance and reflection. And then within phase 3B, we've got some further land for development. So in order to be eligible uh, for um, to, to take control of this land, a group must have an association with North Stowe. The organization has to have a charitable state, uh, status and has and can evidence that they have the, both the financial resources and the organizational capacity to develop the land in question. Any building that would come forward on one of these parcels of faith land not only needs to accommodate the needs of the worshipping community or the community group, but also be available to the wider community and offer a range of uh, um, services to them. And the entire process by which allocation of this land can be made is set out in an agreed faith land allocation policy, which was agreed by our cabinet way back in 2020. And we've been working very closely with uh, faith groups from North Stowe during the course of the past four years. So last time uh, I was joined by my colleague, uh, Trevine Montero from the urban design team at South Cambridge District Council, part of the Greater Cambridge Shared Planning Service. And he talked through the work that had been done to develop this document, which is a development brief, which will guide potential applicants, potential bidders, um, in formulating their plans for the first parcel of faith land on phase one. I have copies available at the end if anyone would like to 
have a look at that in greater detail. It's also held on our uh, community forum web page on the district council's website, so anyone can view it. So the current position, as I say, this development brief has now been finalised. We have um, for the parcel of land on phase one, an agreed red line. We've um, had approval of the service corridor that's been proposed by LNQ. That's now been approved by um, the planning service. There is some um, adjustment to the timetable that we envisage for transfer of that land. It's now likely to transfer at the culmination of LNQ, now Urban and Civics, finishing works in January 2026. We have an agreement with LNQ to gain further details on that site, to perhaps survey it, uh, and, and on the basis of the information that they already have about that land, and provide that in an information pack to bidders, which brings me to the point of talking about when will that bidding process launch? <clears throat> the first step towards that is gaining approval from our cabinet, which we hope to do in November, to launch that bidding process ahead of taking transfer of the land. The bidding process itself has a window for application of a whole year. So we could clearly open that bidding process, receive applications, prior to land transfer or along the same lines of the timeline for the land transfer. So if that's approved, we would be looking to launch that bidding round at some point around the turn of the year and making decisions in 2026 in um, the early spring. So I hope I've done that in five minutes. Happy to take any questions. <laughs> Great, very punctual. Um, does anyone have any questions for Claire on the faith lands that's just been outlined there? No? Well, if any questions do come, Claire, I know you'll be uh, staying after the end of this session. So if anyone does want to collar Claire at the end, please feel free. Um, OK, up next, North Stowe Town Council with your very own, uh, count it says Councillor Paul Littlemore, but it's Mayor Law Pitt. Paul went little more, actually. I, I think there's a whole piece into give, give you full credit yeah. address, but anyway, we won't get. I, thought, I think that microphone is actually set for a much shorter person, Paul. Unfortunately, okay. so you may have we to. Can, uh, you may we... have to rearrange. Uh, okay, okay. excellent. Right, I don't have any fancy slides tonight, uh, so I just wanted to share three kind of sort of headline updates with you. So uh, I think last time we were here, uh, we were talking about re-recruitment of our market manager. Um, so that process has now concluded uh, and we welcomed uh, Ola to the team uh, in um, August, early August. Um, so you will see her on our on our monthly uh, Sunday markets. Uh, please say hello, and make her feel very welcome. Uh, secondly, we've got another round of recruitment open at the moment. So in our August meeting, we agreed that uh, we would create a role for an asset and estates manager. So this is a bit more of a longer term view um, and to look at what we might want to do around community buildings, um, future open space, um, highway assets, bus stops, you name it. You know, it's super exciting. Uh, that's still open. So if that's a role that might interest you, you have another four hours to apply. Um, so, uh, but uh, but yeah, so I'm hoping that that's going to conclude uh, sort of reasonably, uh, reasonably soon and we can get uh, another individual on board to help us power forward with plans for that. Um, and the August meeting also approved uh, funding for um, the Hope on the Go project. So mobile food van, which uh, is now attending on a Friday, 10.30 till 11.30 on the green. Uh, also supported by Long Stanton Parish Council. Um, so uh, I know that many of you might already know about that, but but they they offer um, essential everyday essential items at either free or cost price, um, and has been well received across South Cambridgeshire. Uh, uh, and we've we've put the funding down to trial that for six months. So uh, if there's people that you think that may want to use that service, or you may want to use it yourself, then uh, then then please do. Um, sort of attendance numbers are weekly, really. So. They're my three updates. So any any questions? That's a brief. Any questions for 
uh, Paul here. Yep, gentleman there in the middle. Um, this is possibly not within the remit of North Slow Town Council, um, but I'm not quite sure who to address it to. But the issue of um, people still parking on the future cycle lanes, as they're labelled, um, it's really getting very difficult for some uh, bus for, for the buses to get through in some places, particularly Wellington Road. Um, there's a lot of vehicles parked on 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 the cycle lane, and for those of us that do cycle in North Slow you know there's no point having those cycle lanes because it's just impossible to use them so either you're on the pavement or you're in the road um that may well as i say not be the responsibility of the town council but i wondered if anyone could address that and in terms of a timeline of when those uh, cycle lanes might be adopted um uh by the county council and enforcement of the cycle lanes that, that sounds very much like a tam question uh, I did I did have a meeting with Tam not that long ago discussing whether a curb is a solid white line and whether that makes cycle lanes enforceable. So um, we do have conversations like that, but I'll hand over to Tam. It's very exciting, isn't it, Paul? It is. Yes. Um, so Tam Parry, Cambridge County Council, kind of do transport in North Stone. So LNQ, as you might know, need to finish the roads off first, and I think they're planning to do that in 2025. Once they've completed the roads, the cycle lanes and all of the tarmac will be complete, will be kind of, the cycle lanes will be red, um, tarmac will be black as normal for the roads, so they'll stand out a lot more. Um, hopefully then also the real lines will go down and the county council will come along and enforce those yellow lines because we can now do enforcement in South Cambridge District Council area. So um, if you are unlucky enough to have a ticket, then I'm terribly sorry. But they're cycle lanes, and um, that's what they are. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, any more questions for your town councillor? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so one more, I think, for the same gentleman. Is that right? That's fine. That's why we're here. <laughs> so um, one of the issues we face in North Stow is that most websites and secure um, online services, et cetera, require two-step authentication, which includes uh, an SMS being sent to mobile phones. And those of us that still receive phone calls occasionally, you know, some people still do that sort of thing. Um, it's impossible to receive either SMS or a phone call because of the lack of 4G or even 3G uh, in some parts of North Stowe. So my question relates to a tower, an antenna, which will enable proper mobile phone coverage in North Stowe to eradicate some of those issues. Any any timeline on that? So I don't think that would be something that I think I could influence myself. But I know many of our town councillors have reached out to mobile phone networks, but I, I don't think they quite realise that we exist yet, uh, which is which is difficult. Um, from conversations I've had with others, there is a disused mast, I think, somewhere down near Rampton Drift, which was oranges. Um, so, I mean, there's there's a site that possibly could make life better for people, but how on earth? We plug into plug into that. Hmm. Uh, it went to the planning inspector. It was approved, and then they've not they've not delivered it. It was approved by the planning inspector in the end. Hmm. Okay, so, but yeah, I, yeah, well, no, yeah, I'm not sure uh, if you can answer ideas, that one fully, Paul. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, if there's any ideas on how we can plug into them, if anyone works for a mobile phone operator, uh, I'd be more than happy to have a conversation. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure there's probably anyone, uh, officers or others in this room that probably might be able to answer that, I'm afraid. But, um, you know, good on you for trying, Paul. I appreciate it. <laughs> anything else? Um, yeah, Graham, anything. We've probably got time for one more question if anyone has one. Yep, gentleman here in the middle. Yeah, back to the subject of cycle lanes. So I know on the the way up to the the school, the there's the bollards on the kind of on the to protect the cycle lane, and we can actually use them, and they're great. But the problem they create is all the grit and dirt can't get off the cycle lane, so it all kind of collects there. So when I'm cycling up there with my kid, it's quite it's quite off putting because you're seeing bits of glass or big stones and so on. I'm just wondering, is there any way that that could be cleaned? alongside the road kind of looking towards the team again it's a question about um maintaining the cycle lane currently because it's getting quite yeah. dirty i don't know if either dean or maybe tam might want to attack that one hold, hold yeah, on to the mic people online can't hear you otherwise 
uh, apologies everyone online. Um, uh, the, um, the cycle the gentleman was referring to is Homes England's uh, responsibility until um, the roads adopted. So um, I think it's something we can um, we can take away. I mean, I cycle myself, and um, uh, yeah, the um, the advantage of having the red and white barriers, on, at least on a temporary basis, is to um, enable the cycleways to be uh, used, as you say, which which is a positive, but um, unintended consequence, I suppose, that um, uh, it's therefore difficult to um, to sweep the cycle lanes. It doesn't. I wouldn't have thought it's impossible for us to, he says, move them temporarily, sweep the road and then put them back. Um, I will make those inquiries and see if that's something um, we can do. So I will take that away. Thank you for raising it. Great. Thank you. Um, so we've got one more question, but we do only have one more presentation and then it's an open forum for Q&A. So if it's okay with you, I'll take, we'll move on now from Paul. We'll take our last um our last presentation which is on community development it was an answer but i can give it to you afterwards uh, i'll give you an answer to the um if it's site. an answer let's let's have it now uh, yeah. all i was going to say is i will um uh, claire mills principal of norstow learning community um i'm very happy to speak to kia about keeping that area clear as well i appreciate they can't sweep the whole road but when things are coming in and out i'm very happy to speak to Kia about you know just watching that because it's it's a danger to our young people as well great no, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, anyway, if you join me in thanking Paul for uh, giving us an update from the Town Council. And yeah, our final presentation of the evening is from Michaela and Michelle, who are going to be talking to us about community development. Hi hey, now. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Michaela Stan, and I'm one of the community development officers. Um, I'd like to mention a few events that took place since our last community forum. So first on uh, the Midsummer Festival, which took place in June, in the longest day of the year. Um, I'll take this opportunity to say thank you to Mary O'Neill. I know she's here somewhere uh, from North Star Arts and also Peter Cope from uh, North Star Hub for the organizing parties for this event. Um, it is hoped um, the Midsummer Festival will be held again uh, on the 21st of June next year. Um, if you'd like to get involved, please get in touch with Mary or um, either Michelle or I, and we'll be able to direct you, put you in the right direction. Another community that also took place in June was the Community Skips Day, um, and um, this involved recycling skips, toy swaps, um, storytelling, um, a, a workshop. Um, and this is also going to be repeated next year uh, because it was a very successful um, event. Um, and I believe Maria is here tonight, Maria Harrison from Sustainable North Star. Thank you for organizing this wonderful event as well. Um, we are now looking forward to Light Up North Star, which will take place on the 23rd of November. Save the date to your calendars. There will be a lantern parade, which will finish at the green, um, ready for the light switch on. Um, we always need volunteers, so if anybody would like to get involved in anything, in uh, organizing or delivering any community events or anything else at all, please get in touch with us. Where in the world photo quiz? Um, we are organizing um, a, photo, uh, a, a photo quiz, which is based on uh, photographs which were submitted by um, local residents from landmarks either um, abroad or um, local. This is still open until this coming Friday. So if you would like to participate, um, head on um, to the North Star Hub website. Um, or we have some copies um, of the cabin as well. Come and ask us and we can um, um, hand you one over. Um, before handing over to Michelle, just a last minute thing. Uh, our occupation counts in Norsto. Uh, so far, we have 1,379 uh, new build properties in phase one, 72 in phase two, which brings the new build total to 1,451. And um, the overall total, including ramped and drift, is 1,550. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. My name is Michelle A. Devik Skinner, and I'm the other Community Development Officer here in Northstow. I would like to start off with a, a big thank you to Marchin and Liz for another excellent Northstow Running Festival um, the last weekend. 
in August. It comprised of a, a half marathon, a 10K, a 5K and a family mile. It was an absolutely super day for everyone. Um, messages that I have sort of read afterwards have been very complimentary, but also a lot of the marshals that were helping out on the day have decided that they would actually like to run next year. So if anyone here would like to be a marshal, come and see Mark and, um, or myself, or if you know anyone that would be interested, I think they may be looking out for some next year if uh, the current ones are going to be running. The event was finished off with um, an outdoor film showing, which was organized by North Stowe Arts. Um, the menopause group um, had a break from their monthly meetings in August, and they had a meet, well, they met up at the Tap and Social instead for a few drinks. But the meeting uh, this month, September the 25th, they've got a guest speaker, um, Ingrid from Midlife 360, who's going to come and talk to people about coping with the menopause and having confidence when looking for a new job or changing role. And would also be interested in people who are working in HR to talk to them about how they can help employees and employers in the business and people um, that are going through the sort of the menopause or perimenopause stages. Um, the wellbeing walks are uh, a means of providing a friendly and social way of having some exercise and meeting new people in and around North Stowe. Um, the volunteers organised themes walks, including a very successful treasure hunt walk that they had during the summer holiday. Um, everyone was given a treasure hunt map with some questions and um, a winner was picked out yesterday from all the successful um, treasure hunt answers and we'll be giving the prize to them um, shortly. The last two bits on there, we'd like to thank Homes England. So Homes England have kindly supported the Kickstart Fund and the North Stowe Community Activation Fund. Um, the Kickstart is open to anyone setting up a new not-for-profit group or activity for the benefit of the community. Um, the most recent successful application was for, I need my assistant, Junior Bowls. So they have had a few sets of Junior Bowls with the Kickstart money, and um, they have had year 10 students from North Stowe Secondary College having some taster sessions, which they really, really enjoyed. In fact, there's some photographs on their website showing this and they also had a, um, a family fun day or it's a junior day and bring a family member with them now obviously at the moment the, the bowls lawn is going to be looked after uh, over the winter months and then i think as far as this is right david they will be starting again in april um, of next year so if you've got any family members who are interested in actually you know junior members learning bowls then please see david david over there's the chairman of Long Stanton Bowls Club. And although it's dark now, you may have seen when you first arrived that the bowls green literally is the other side of this window. Um, so if you, you didn't work, I'm going to sort of peek out. Thank you. Um, the Community Activation uh, Fund, also supported by Homes England. Um, South Cambridgeshire District Council is administrating this on their behalf. Um, this fund offers financial support to volunteering and community sector groups, charities and public sector bodies who want to further improve the quality of life in North Stowe. Um, successful applications have been the Midsummer Festival, which Mahela mentioned earlier, um, the Outdoor Cinema, which I said followed on from the Running Festival, um, and Ganesh Yutsaf, which is a Hindu Samaj event, which they had um, last weekend. If you would like to discuss any idea for um, funding, please speak to Mahela or myself. Thank you. Much. Um, before we move into the open forum for Q&A, does anyone have any specific questions uh, for North Stowe's community development team? No, all very clear. So thank you very much. Um, so that ends our uh, formal presentations now. We do have around 20 minutes or so if needed, if anybody wants to ask any general uh, questions about um, anything that hasn't been raised or presented already this evening. Um, you may have sort of seen the, the sort of the people in the room that are here to answer the questions. So if it's something that someone isn't able to answer, I think it's fair to say we can take that question away and get in touch with you after the meeting. Um, but if anyone does have any general questions, please do do raise your hands and um, yeah, we will do our best to answer. So yeah, our friend in the middle there.
Thank you. So Stagecoach recently increased the frequency of the A guided bus, uh, which was initially greeted with considerable enthusiasm. Um, and lots of people decided to take the bus instead of their car. But since the schools have gone back this week um, or last week, we've we've now faced a situation where two or three buses in a row are full and people can't get on, which is back to the situation we were in, you know, in previous years. So what seems to be happening is that people are getting on in St. Dives and traveling into Cambridge or to CRC, which is a major, uh, obviously, magnet for, for students, lots of people getting off there. So unfortunately, but when it reaches North Stow, it seems to be full already at those peak times of students going to school or, or college. So the question is, if we have a representative from Stagecoach, is it possible to put on a bus from North Stow uh, to Cambridge or North Stow even just to CRC? Um, I think most people living in North Stowe would want to get into Cambridge, but the problem is leaving St. Ives means it's already full when it gets here. So do we have a representative or Fruz perhaps? Can talk uh, well, we, I say we, we did have two representatives from Stagecoach at the beginning, but unfortunately they had to leave at 7 p.m. at the start of the meeting. But I know your county councillor, Fruz Thompson, she's been very close to this. So um, it's probably better if Fruz gives us her, her take on it. Um, thanks, Graham. Really good question. Um, we set up a bus petition earlier in the year for the bus from Longstand to Park and Ride to be reinstated. Thank you to all the residents. We had over 550 people sign it, which was a really good, which actually allowed us to get in the room with combined authority. Um, the situation is the combined authority's new Tiger passes for, um, for young people under the age of 25, from 18 to 25 have had 21,000 applications, which is fantastic. And we're really pleased for families that can afford that. That reduces a two pound bus service to a pound. Um, apparently 60% of them are 18 and under. Um, yeah, so basically the um, petition, when we put the petition in, they, they told us that there was already a proposal from Stagecoach for the southern end of the busway, which um, feeds into Addenbrooke's and the hospital area. And um, so they were able to look at the northern side for us because we put, put in the petition. Um, short while after that, it was announced that, well, basically, we are not the only bus stop on the busway to have that problem. Practically, Swavesy beforehand, St Ives does. I've spoken to people on the bus this week, even as far as Huntington is having that problem. I think the success of this um, Tiger Bus Pass and the frequency of the bus A has been, well, it's been unprecedented, really. No one expected to be that um, high. So the current situation is I sp I've spent the last week at the bus stop from 7 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. And um, buses are going past. Um, Buses are coming full, buses are leaving full. I'm pleased to say there's quite a few people coming, getting off for this fixed form, which is really nice. Yeah, we all clap when they got off. So that was really nice. I think we counted about 15 students coming off. So it's really nice. Um, I don't know what the solution is. That's really being honest. We've had emergency meetings with CPCA on Monday evening. I've been writing emails, left, right, centre, observations of what could happen, what could work. There is there is the whole idea we've spoken about, a route bus that could go from St Ives um, just down to CRC, down to Cambridge North, come back and do a route. But that's currently not a bus route, so it needs to go through traffic commissioners. And also, I think the problem at the moment is that we're basing a lot of buses, not based on data. So, you know, if you do want to carry on or look at a route like that, we've, you know, we've said to stagecoach, they need to provide some kind of data for, you know, how many people do get off at CRC? How many people do get off at Science Park and Cambridge North and et cetera? Is it valuable to have, you know, just a loop bus? Um, yeah, and I, you know, I don't really know what the situation is because CPCA is, have, is saying they have no money. Um, all the funds are currently funded for other buses that they've done. Actually, what, which are one of them is a Huntington Express that goes through um, the old A14. I was told it was going to come on the B1050 and join Long Santa Park and Ride, but I've now been told it's now going to Swavesea. That's currently being tendered 
And my question again to CPCA is, why are you putting on a bus if you don't know data? You know, what is your data to put on that bus route? So um, questions are there. Stagecoach is saying they've paid over a million pounds to put. So there was three new buses on the 1st of September put in the, on the busway, given 10 minutes bus A frequencies. Bus B is a 20 minutes. Um, two of the buses are funded by CPCA. One of, sorry, one of the buses is CPCA and two of the buses by Stagecoach. So they're currently at a position that they didn't expect it. On Friday morning, they put two spare buses on the busway and it just touched the sides. So, you know, they literally don't have any more buses. On Monday, Tuesday, I was at the bus stop with David Bowden, who was here, the operations director. On Tuesday, I was at the bus stop with Darren, the MD. They all look at it. We were taking diary. We were taking shots. We've got so many photographs of, a, you know, the bus stop was 60 people, you know, and, and they're going away full, never mind about Histon, Orchard, Orchard Park. You know, those are not even getting the sea into it. So I don't know what the question is. I really don't know. Is there a... I don't know, we just need to make it work because we've got new people moving in every day. And um, it's really up to CPCA and Stagecoach to make it happen. I'm quite disappointed, but in all of this, I'm really pleased there is a demand because there hasn't been a demand before. Um, so there's some good, there's some bad. So that's all I have at the moment. I'll keep keep you posted. Sorry, that was really long, but- if That's okay, it's a, it's a hot topic. So, you know, it's good to have some uh, some insight to that. So, I mean, I think as Peru said, you know, ultimately um, responsibility for public transport lies with the combined authority. Um, and stagecoach themselves as the operator as well. So, I mean, I think if if people do want to do something, I'd say write to those two bodies, um, write to your county councillor as well, because obviously she's very heavily involved in public transport in the area. Um, I know the combined authority do currently have uh, a consultation open around franchising, so a completely different model to the one that's currently operating, um, which would actually uh, essentially put um, routes out to tender. So, you know, stagecoach wouldn't essentially have the mo monopoly on public transport in Cambridgeshire. Um, but I think in the short term, though, that would be my advice anyway, be to write to the two bodies, uh, involve your county councillor as well. Okay, thank you. So I think we've covered buses there. Um, anybody have any other questions? Raise the hand if so. Yeah, gentlemen on the second row. This might be the repeat of the last question, really. Um, who do we reach out for network coverage then? I didn't. I don't think I got the answers about the network coverage. Who do we reach out to that? Sorry, can you say that again? Who do we reach out for getting the network coverage in North Stone? Oh, the network coverage. Okay, I don't think we had an answer to that one. So, yeah, so <laughs> I mean, um, my question is, who do we reach out to if not here? Um, I mean, I'd probably say in the short term, if you want to actively do something, I mean, the county council do have um, an element in it called uh connecting cambridgeshire so it's i probably recommend reaching out to them in the first instance it probably won't be them that will ultimately solve the issue but if you're looking to lobby someone i'd say they're probably the best starting point um because they're they're essentially responsible for making sure as many people within the county have internet connectivity as they can which includes things like 4g 5g so yeah i mean if you speak to Farouz, i'm sure she can put you in touch with a, an officer at the county council yeah because it's worse on the phase two side um, keep mode and yeah, I'm sure the new areas that you're going to build and it will get worse as more people move in, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure the newer sides will be worse covered, I'm sure. But no. Can I just quickly say that next Wednesday, the 18th, um, the 18th of September, uh, from half past 10 until half past one, we have somebody from Connecting Cambridgeshire coming along to the cabin uh, for a different topic um, um, as a di digital advisor, but he will be there. Um, it might be worth popping in if he if you have any time to ask the question. Yeah, or if not, I'm sure someone can ask the question to them on, on our friend's behalf here, yeah. Okay, uh, anyone else? Any questions generally? Yeah, gentlemen here. Yeah, pro probably just getting back to buses, I think. <laughs> that's, that's the hot topic. Um, it seems to be the same thing every year at this time. We have the same conversation that the buses are not able to meet the demand and you know, people are spending 45 minutes, an hour waiting to get on a bus. It's really tricky because, you know, everyone needs to get on the bus for their own reasons and there's jostling. It's actually getting quite frustrating as a, as a, someone who tries to use public transport and not use a car. Um, and I think there's a risk that the Tiger Pass will actually, people will stop. If, if it doesn't get fixed, it's going to get worse. But I don't, 
trying to think constructively of what can we actually do because it's it's the same thing every year like if we go back to the minutes of all the meetings around this time you're going to see people complaining about the buses and there's just a lot of deflection and people saying well we don't can't put a bus starting at Northstow. we used to when Northstow was first there we did have buses that started here and they actually worked really well but yeah so I, i'm not I, I don't know what else to say just just adding that it, it seems to be a repeat thing every year and it's is there anything more we can do or should we write to our MPs or like what's the how do we escalate this? Yeah, so I think as a community, I mean, lobbying can work, can be successful. Yeah. So, I mean, as a community, if you wanted to write to your local member of parliament, if you wanted to write directly to the combined authority, to write to stagecoach to explain the issue, I mean, I'm sure they are very well versed in it. But obviously, um, a very loud public voice can help, certainly in situations like this. Um, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you've got um, a petition that Farouz has been organising. We've also, the combined authority themselves have a, a consultation currently around a franchising model. So one that would make bus travel a bit more uh, user friendly, I'd say, and a bit more accessible. Um, but that's probably been my suggestion. Farouz, I don't know if you wanted to add something. I've got two suggestions there. I think this year is slightly different just because CPCA has invested uh, money on the Tiger Pass, so they've got to make that a success. That's one difference from last year. I think the difference from last year it also is that we got this, the 5A. I know it's a longer run, but you know people are telling me that they can't get on at Drummer Street at the moment because the bus A and bus B is really full. But actually, bus 5A stops there and it's on time. It's not late. And it just takes that little bit longer, which is actually currently faster than what bus A and what bus B is. I would say those. And I, and I think the combined authority has a real invest. They've made an investment and they've got to make it work. And so I think this is really different to all the years before. There is only one thing that happened on Tuesday was it wasn't as busy as the rest of the time I've been at the bus stop. So I did put out a post last night. Is there a change in behaviours? And yeah, you're right. In September, it does get a real flood. And then after a couple of weeks, it kind of settles. So you know, we don't want to go and do loads of things when it, it might change. I mean, the busway situation has been going on for seven years. I've lived here for seven years and it hasn't improved. So, so yeah, so that's all my piece. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've just been told we have had a question online. Um, I don't know if someone can give you the question or read it out. So, uh, just for an update regarding the secondary college gym and cafe that Claire Gibbons from Provider. Okay. So it's a question on the secondary college and um, and gym cafe, which Claire's going to respond to. Yeah. So the news on that front is that we've been working very closely with Meridian Trust and uh, colleagues from the County Council, as well as South Cambridgeshire District Council. And we are moving forward on the gym and cafe at Northstow Secondary College. So just for those who uh, aren't aware, when the first phase of North Stowe Secondary College was built, it was built with the dual use uh, community facilities in place. At the moment, the cafe and the gym area are mere shells, but we're working to bring forward that facility much earlier than the Section 106 agreement identifies. Um, within that document, it sets out a trigger of two and a half thousand occupations across phases one and two. But we know that the demand is there. We're hearing it all the time. People want access to that gym and to see the cafe being brought forward. South Cambridgeshire District Council has managed to secure substantial funding from the combined authorities shared prosperity fund. So the money is there to fund the cafe fit out. That has been ordered, it is about to, to commence. Now, we are working closely with uh, Claire Mills, who introduced herself earlier, and uh, the, the partners that I've already mentioned to progress that uh, project further. There's been some very detailed um, market engagement work, which Meridian Trust has carried out over the course of the summer, so that we can begin to think about the model by which we could bring in an operator to perhaps uh, manage that facility. But there's much to be discussed and agreed around that. So I'll leave it there for now. But we are making progress. Great. Thank you, Claire. 
Um, does anyone else have any things for the general Q&A? Yep, gentleman on the far side over there. Right, so the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have kind of risen the profile of Norster across the country. Can anyone give me any assurances that the infrastructure is going to be accelerated in North Star and it's not just houses that are going to be built? Very good question. Um, I can't answer that one. I don't know if any of our friends from Homes England can help with that one at all. I think I think we're all probably, I'd say it's fair to say, we're receiving the information at the same time as it's been put into the public ether. Um, but I don't know if any of our colleagues that have spoken this evening might be able to help us out with any inside information. I certainly don't have anything further. Probably looking at you here, Dean. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And I, well, I don't have any inside information, but um, I, I think what I can say is that um, the collaboration agreement, which was discussed um, earlier, um, and uh, I obviously introduced um, Richard, who sits alongside me from Capital and Centric, um, when uh, he's in a position to share uh, proposals with you, they will be, um, in, you know, they'll include town centre facilities and um uh but potentially i have i have talked at previous meetings about this kind of meanwhile use the terminology i've used kind of pop-ups for as an initial um sort of um sort of stake in the ground really for the town center and um we are in discussion with capital and centric who have extensive experience actually about uh, in relation to these kinds of um facilities so i don't want to put richard on the spot but he might be able to say a few words about some of the schemes that they've delivered elsewhere where they have um, brought on facilities um kind of early through meanwhile use and pop-ups would that be okay chair yep that's fine richard yeah sure so um yeah as uh, as dean says you know we, we are pretty well versed in meanwhile use and that to us is kind of a number of different things so we have created lots of different events such as art battles we had um probably the weirdest one was we did a pottery throwdown which uh also combined some karaoke which was quite an odd evening um but we've also done kind of pop-up um breweries kind of depends on the on the site it depends on the buildings that we're working in if there's actually some heritage there we'll try and kind of incorporate that as well into some of the meanwhile use um i think here in particular we definitely see that there will be a uh, an interim offer if you like so the town center We've got lots of great ideas, lots of great plans that we will share with you guys. Um, that's going to take a little while to go through planning and obviously getting into construction. It's not going to be happening immediately. So we do want to look at bringing in a, I don't know, we like the term meanwhile, because it kind of suggests a bit of a Mad Max kind of shipping containers everywhere type offer, which might not necessarily be the way that we do this. So we want to have a look at what is the right way to deliver the, um, the, the, the required amenity, I suppose. So part of this engagement event that we're looking to do um, on the 10th of October is to try and understand a little bit more from the people who live here what actually are the things that need to go in immediately what are the things that could wait a little bit longer so we can then start to factor that into how quickly could we deliver some form of meanwhile use therefore what would that make up and then how could we then start to look at the more permanent town centre and what offers and amenity and facilities need to go into those earlier phases to make sure we're kind of delivering on on what's required so there is a bit of work to do on that and we don't want to do that behind the scenes and then come and go ta-da we want to definitely kind of engage with you guys and, and understand a little bit more uh, of what's required so i hope that answers the question so i'm not quite sure where the question came from but mm. thanks yeah. i think it's pretty fair to say from the district council's point of view as well i think since the government made the announcement you know actually identify north Stow as a town they want to accelerate building in we have been asking the relevant ministers what exactly that means you know what exactly do you mean by acceleration what does that mean in numbers but we haven't had any uh, sort of meaningful response back yet so i think they are they have identified north Stow, albeit not sure what exactly that means in in real terms but obviously if we do if we do hear anything we'd obviously share that with the community as soon as we did okay We've got time for one more. If anyone has a final question to round us off, yes, lady at the back. Thank you. Um, I wondered if there are any plans for a swimming pool in North Stowe. Very direct. Um, yep. Uh, who wants to take that one? I'm looking at my colleagues. I'll take it. Are you, you going to take the plunge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yes, there are plans to bring forward a swimming pool. 
Land has been secured within phase two on the education campus for a six lane swimming pool. Section 106 agreements for phase 3A and phase 3B identify some funding towards delivering that facility. It's by far not enough to build the pool. So over the next decade or so, we will be looking to bring forward a strategy that will move us towards delivery of that pool, but we, it will involve identifying substantial additional funding. We have briefed the town council to that effect. They are aware, but it will be a work in progress over the years ahead. Okay, so the short answer is yes. Um, okay, well, that pretty brings us to the end of the formal q and I think the majority of the speakers we've had today and presenters uh, are going to be hanging around till about nine o'clock. So if anybody does want to collar anyone and have a private one-to-one -one chat, then they will be available for that. I think the bar is still open as well, albeit I don't think you can get anything too strong there, but uh, I believe you can still get refreshments. Um, but yeah, it just leaves me to say, uh, well, firstly, the next forum is on Wednesday, the 4th of December. Um, thank you to all of our speakers. I know some did travel quite far to be with us this evening, so I thank them for that. And thank you to everyone from North Stowe for turning out and showing an interest. So thank you very much. And we'll close the formal part of the meeting there. Thank you. <laughs>